Adam Stack Maker F3 Honeycomb Laser Bed. It's in this little box right here. It needs to be assembled. I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And it's a very cold, blustery March day out there. So I'm spending some time in the shop here. And Adam Stack sent me this F3 honeycomb laser bed, which is actually more of a sawtooth bed than an actual honeycomb. And it needs to be assembled. It doesn't come pre-assembled. And it's a completely different style from, uh, for example, here's one here. There's different shapes and sizes and designs you can get. And you can get little ones if you like. Here's a small one here that I use just for a little quick projects. And I use it on my uh, CO2 laser, my Monport. So, need to get this out of the box and get it assembled. We'll see what we got in here. It looks like a lot of little pieces to put together. A little bit like a jigsaw puzzle, but I like that. So, taking a look, see what we got here. We get a little assembly guide here, mostly in pictures. Doesn't look like it's going to be all that tough. And this is packed in. Everything's marked. We got steps three and four here. There's some Step 5 hardware, uh, alien wrench, and some uh, wing nuts and bolts, frame connector. We have Step 1. You got to look carefully in the carton here so you don't miss anything because the, the packaging is black, and so are these. These are the little rubber feet, and they're in a little foam compartment here and it could be very easily missed. You want to inspect everything closely. Piece of foam. Here we have step two. These are all the saw teeth. Make sure I get everything out of the box here. Apparently do. Now we'll get to putting this together. Now obviously you got some cable ties you're going to have to be cutting and get rid of. We'll get all those unpacked here. Well, we'll keep that close by since that's step two. This here being step one, so we'll put steps three and four off to the side. Some of these other small parts. And these are marked left and right. That's a good thing. Yeah, this is just a little bit confusing, but I think I've got this figured out. You got a left and a right. Of course, this is my left side over here. There's a right. You've got a front and a back. And the, they are not the same. One is obviously wider than the other. It looks by the picture that the wider one is going to go at this end down here. The narrow one will go at the back. So for step one, we've got these two M4 by 10 screws here that are going to the end of this bar. So there's a little hole in the end here and there is a tapped hole in the end of the extrusion there. So those will go together like so. Now I'm going to be using a handle driver here. It's two and a half M&Ms if you decide to do that. Otherwise you can use the enclosed Allen wrench. This piece fits inside the bottom of this piece and then the screws line up. Otherwise you, it won't, it, you'll never get that lined up. And I'll do the same on the other side here. Okay, so now you have a frame that looks like this. Okay, your step two pieces, and this is a little bit cryptic when you're looking at the pictures, it's hard to tell. These slide into the track here, into the bottom, and you don't really need to start clear at the end. So they slide together and fit like that. And there's a bunch of them. A little notch here that fits over the top of the rail. You know, it's kind of self-explanatory once you start playing with it here. As I said, the picture's a little bit cryptic, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly what you're supposed to be doing here. Little hint here, keep, uh, keep that tight, or these will all fall out and you'll be doing it over. Kind of keep that push together tight as you're bringing those in. And once you get all your pieces in place, and kind of keep things together tight, We'll go on to steps three and four here, which are these pieces, so watch you don't lose your little rods in there. Set them up to the side here. Now we have all of these to put in. And if you look at your extrusions here, you'll see you got a whole bunch of little slots. That's where these guys are going to go.
Once you get all those dropped in place, you have these little rods here that will need to be slid down through the entire assembly. I'm going to turn this around, keeping a good tight grip on it so I can see what I'm doing over here. A little channel right in the end to slip this rod through. And that catches a hold of every one of the pieces over there so that they can't come out. Kind of a novel design. And you definitely want to be on a flat surface or you're going to have a hard time getting the rod slid in. You may have to wiggle it around a little bit. Haven't got that one yet. And there it slipped in. Now i got to get it to the very end. And I'm going to take my Allen and push the rod in a little bit so that I can put my screw in on the end down here. So now your end piece, right here, step five, will fit. And the little channel on the ends. And you'll have a couple of M4 by 14 screws to put in there. Okay, next would be to put the little rubber feet on the bottom. We'll flip this over. We've got these four little feet here. One goes on each corner, like so. That'll space this up so it'll give a place for the smoke to get out through all these little grooves here. But before I put them on, I need to clean the spots with some alcohol. And by alcohol, I mean like uh, rubbing alcohol or lens wipe, not the good tequila or whiskey. Okay, so I keep a little rubbing alcohol in this little pump dispenser here, just for things like this. Get those spots good and clean, get all the oil off of them. That way those pads will stick. It says 3M on the backing pads, so I would imagine it's really 3M adhesive. At least I hope it is. Well, there's our rubber feet on it. And the piece of paper that they give you with it is to put on your desktop underneath so that the smoke that blows through here doesn't stain your desktop. This would be to mount your wood on, your project on. Okay, they give you some hold downs here. That's what's in this little package here is a pack of four hold downs. I'll get that unwrapped. So all you would do to put these together is to pass your bolt through one end of it and spin the wing nut back on. Then that will slide through this track over here. Take my little sticker off of there. It slides, this little T-nut thing will slide through there. And then you can tighten that down to hold your project in place if you need to. You just clamp it underneath or you could just set them off to the side out of the way. Okay, you'll also see to give you a frame connector. That is if you have more than one of these, Let's say you want to put it on an extended frame laser, and I have a couple of those. I've got a Zabay 2 and an x -Tool D1 that are both extended, plus an Oferro. You can extend this by putting these in the ends here. You can just screw the two together and you'll have an extended honeycomb bed. So now I bet you'd like to see this thing operate, see how it compares to a regular honeycomb bed. For that, I need to get a laser on the table. Well, I'm sure that Adam Stack would have preferred me to use one of their lasers, but my A5 Pro is in an enclosure, so you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. So I'm going to put a sheet of aluminum underneath this uh, honeycomb board rather than the paper because aluminum doesn't burn. And this laser was already here and it was already on risers, so I wouldn't have to change anything. I'll get this set in here. And I'll have to get a project together and a laptop set up. One thing you'll need to watch for if you're going to use the hold downs is that the bolts do not catch on anything on your laser. Whether it be a stepper motor or the arm or the laser head itself, if you're going to be using those hold downs, make sure they are out of the way of the laser. Okay, this little cut test I run on a lot of my lasers uh, for cutting three millimeter plywood. That's what this is, a little Dollar Tree shape you can get for a buck and a quarter. Good thing to practice on. And this one has some defects on it, so I'm going to use it for this little demonstration. Uh, we'll see how this compares to cutting with a regular honeycomb board. And I am using air assist, so it, it's a comparison where I use, uh, with my honeycomb boards, I've always got air assist on. So we're going to keep apples to apples here. So I've already framed this. I'm working for absolute coordinates, so I'll give this a start. First, it's going to take a little while to do. Familiar with what one of these test grids are, it's a, a way to check your material with this grid. It uses speeds from 100 millimeters per minute up to 1,000 millimeters per minute 
but then power from 10% to 100% in 10% steps. This has good, I guess we'll call it ventilation as I'm watching here as I'm getting up to where it's starting to cut through. Um, it's venting the smoke out really, really well underneath. So I don't have that hanging in in there. As you can see, it's just blowing right out the sides. With the honeycomb board, uh, the conventional honeycomb, some of that smoke can get trapped in there. It can stain the back of your project. Not scorch so much, but it, it can stain it. Okay, we've got that cut out. Look at the back there. There's no scorching, so it does its job. Okay, this is a grid I just cut, and as you can see, there's no scorching on the back. Of course, there's no scorching on the front because I'm using air assist. But uh, something I kind of wanted to point out of how useful these cutting test patterns are. Yes, I'm going to show you one here that was done on a, this is a 10 watt laser. This was cut on right here. This one was done on a supposed 20 watt laser, but as you can see, it's not anywhere near 20 watt. In fact, it's closer to the results I would expect on a 5 watt. So um, I'm not going to say what brand this was because I'm working with them to uh, see what they're going to do about the defective head because it, obviously this is not a 20 watt. Uh, this is my 10 watt pattern, 10 watt pattern. I should have blown right through this using the 10 watt settings instead of the 20 watt settings, but on the 20 watt, it wouldn't even hardly make a mark on it. There's what I use these grids for. Now I'll get back to talk about this honeycomb board a little bit here. Or I should say sawtooth board. So what are the pros and cons of this Adam Stack F3, what they call honeycomb, I call sawtooth board. Pros. It is open. It has a very, very open architecture and there's not as much contact as there would be with a standard honeycomb. So there'd be less chances of uh, any type of under project scorching. Uh, another pro, uh, pro on this is these frame connectors, to be able to connect these together if you have a, a large format laser. And I said I have three of them, so this would be a uh, Excellent thing to use on those. Uh, when I take conventional honeycomb boards, and I can put them side by side, but I've got that section in there where the frames are, uh, which are fairly substantial, about three quarters of an inch. If you put two of them side by side, you've got an inch and a half of space there. It's not a honeycomb board, it's just a flat surface. And wherever it crosses that, I get scorching. So that the frame connectors on this, it, that's an excellent feature. Okay, another pro on this, and well, maybe it's a con too, depending on how you want to look at it, are the hold downs. Yes, that's a pro. It's nice to have those built-in hold downs with the bolts that uh, follow that channel. Very easy to position them and clamp them down. The only con is you're going to have to be very, very careful where you place those bolts in relation to your laser head so that it doesn't run into them because they do stick up quite a bit. Something to keep in mind if you're going to use a honeycomb board or a sawtooth uh, bed like this is you, depending on the thickness of your project, you may need to elevate your laser with risers or set them on something, blocks of wood or whatever you need to use because that does increase your space in there and it takes up what would normally be project space. So that's not a con, that's a fact and it doesn't matter what brand board you're using, it's going to raise that work surface up and you may need to use risers. On this particular uh, laser here, this is Jakota L1, um, I have risers on it because I use a honeycomb bed on this one all the time. And I took it off to uh, demonstrate the atom stack bed on it and it's basically the same height. So obviously you don't have to have an atom stack laser to use an atom stack bed with. It's different brands. I mean I have uh, several different brands of lasers and several different brands of honeycomb beds. And now I have a sawtooth bed. Okay, are there any cons to this? Uh, as I mentioned, that one little con about the hold down bolt sticking up, it's a sort of con, just be very careful where you place those in relation to where your laser heads are going to be traveling so you don't have a collision. Uh, the only other con I have is their assembly sheet here. It's in one, two, three, four, it's in five languages, but it's not very clear. You've got to do a little bit of figuring out as you go. It could be just a little bit more well written 
if you're not mechanical, uh, you may have a problem with it, or if you're not good at jigsaw puzzles, you may have a problem with it. Otherwise, overall, I think it's a, it's a well-built piece of equipment. It comes in a nice small box. Yes, there's some assembly required. Uh, a lot of the other honeycomb boards, you just take them out of the box and stick some feet on them and use them. Uh, you'll definitely want to have some type of protection underneath it. Even though it is guarded there, there will be smoke that escapes. And if you're using it on your dining room table, you could smoke stain your table. Uh, they tell you to use a sheet of paper underneath. I had a big sheet of aluminum, so I used that. That's what I use with uh, all of my other honeycomb beds. So uh, once again, Adam Stack did provide this to me to demonstrate, and hopefully I've done that in a sufficient manner for you, so you understand it, you understand the assembly. Uh, there'll be a link in the description on where to get this, and again, you don't have to have an Adam Stack laser to use an Adam Stack bed. They're interchangeable, different brands. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up, always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the shop, Adam Stack F3. They call honeycomb. I call sawtooth bed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.